This is a goblin. Goblins are green, tiny pieces of shit, which can be weak as hell or decent enough if they meet the right requirements. Yeah. But even if that happens, they still suck. They are usually used as pawns by stronger monsters like orcs. No one bests an orc. And in rare cases, by a goblin chief. Settled in big groups lead by the such fee. They only become a threat if they are led by an actual monster, which isn't a goblin. Otherwise, the group is a fucking joke. If you're interested in learning more about this pitiful creature, I would recommend you Goblin Slayer book, The Game of Childhood Dramas, I Gave and Genocide. A good option if you're having trouble with this phrase of freaks. And remember, if they are green, short, and extremely ugly, they are goblins, and you should slay every single one of them. Except for Gok. He's my pal, you're pretty cool, Gok. Slimes. These jelly looking bastards are commonly known for being the annoying assholes who despise their looks can be really dangerous creatures. The main characteristic of the slimes is their color and their structure. Their slimy structure is both their offense and their defense at the same time. Those monsters might harden themselves to tackle their opponents. Some of them might have acidic properties, that way they can catch their prey and consume them, slowly melting their flesh and bones. And finally, some could grab weapons lacking the melting properties but being able to carry slashing and thrust type weapons with them. Oh. I wish to explain the theories behind the colors of the comic sheets, but I'm afraid I'm out of time. Remember, while the slimes can be dangerous creatures, they also happen to be docile. That means they can also become amazing pets if you desire. If you happen to go for it and try to tame one, well, I wish you good luck. The pumpkin head monster, Jack. He's an uncommon enemy, and this is no surprise, since he only spawns during the night of Halloween. Jack can ignite anything with his magic. Thanks to his ability of a spontaneous combustion, he's able to set on fire to a quick note due to his extremely low casting time. And that's about his strengths. Because despite being an immortal, Jack is actually a pretty fragile being. Jack cannot tank that many hits before he's defeated, to the point that even a kid could one shot him. Jack's fire magic might be quick, but it lacks any destructive trait. It only works as a surprise attack, to be honest. Even if Jack is sweet every time, he will come back thanks to his immortality. He only needs to find a good pumpkin to resurrect himself. The Jack O'Lantern tradition is something special for Halloween, and we have to thank Jack for it. Without anything else to say, I wish you a happy Halloween. What happens when a dog? Bits with the turtle? You get a turtle duck. Cute, isn't he? But what happens with that turtle duck? Mates with a frog. Both are cute as hell, right? So the offspring should be too. That's how it should work. Well, you see, if you try to go beyond cuteness, you might break the cute meter and end up with something completely opposite. The result of that fuck up family tree is the kappa. The kappa are usually found near the edge of rivers, but they've been spotted on lakes and such. Despite their looks, kappa are actually quite strong since they have wrestling as their main combat oh, yeah. discipline. But kappa also suffer from some goofy weaknesses. Oh no! Being polite creatures, if you show some kind of offer, like a cucumber, I guess, they will actually leave you alone and even invite you to their birthday parties. <laughs> Besides that, you could also fart on them. That also works. A question if may I, how would you buff one of the most common vermin in the world? Fast, high sneak levels and most importantly, the ability to carry diseases. The rat is already an interesting monster with a particular strat about slowly killing their opponents. But everything changes when you give them the gigantism perk. The regular rat already has a powerful bite on its own, and with his high stealth it delivers a tiny but effective sneak attack alongside a potion or debuff effect. But the Jagan Rat has a more direct approach to his target, no longer using the sneak to his full potential, with higher damage to his ID counterpart and keeping the potion and debuff effects. Like the legendary Sir German's book says, Jagan Rats will always dominate and lead the rest of the group without question until one of them is able to kill the current leader. It is also written that Rats celebrates birthdays and brings cake and ice cream when you invite them. What?